You know, I've been on the record saying definitively that, Bill, uh, that Ben Simmons is my number one overall pick in the upcoming NBA draft. I just think that he has the potential to be so special. I know that his shot is not there. He hasn't attempted, but so many three-pointers. He only shot 33% from three-point range. But he averaged 19 and 12 on the collegiate level as a freshman, uh, even though he had some decent players around him. You know, I've been on the record thinking that – I just didn't feel like the coach there did a good job at LSU. It's just that simple. I'm sorry. Uh, with that being said, I will say to you, Skip, I've been given reason, uh, uh, given cause to pause. And here's the reason why. It's not Brandon Ingram, who I like a great deal, and I think is worthy of being the number two overall pick. It's nothing like that. It's the fact that it's Philadelphia. If the Los Angeles Lakers had the number one overall pick, there's nothing to talk about. If the Boston Celtics had the number one overall pick instead of finishing third, there's nothing to talk about. But the fact that it's the city of Philadelphia, when you're talking about Philadelphia, you've got to come there ready. And what I mean by that is with your aggression, your fervor, your love for the game, and your willingness to embrace the culture that is Philadelphia. You literally got to strap on your hard hat and be ready to go to work. You can't have people questioning your motor. You can't have people questioning your desire to legitimately be in that city. You have to want to be there. You have to want it bad. And the fact that the Philadelphia 76ers may very well not be that for Ben Simmons is what I would caution them to think about before they select number one overall. Jerry and Brian Colangelo, I have no doubt, will make the right decision. They know what they're doing. Uh, Philadelphia is a phenomenal sports town, but it's for somebody who wants to be there. You got to want it, man. Jaleel Okafor wanted to be in L.A. He didn't want to be in Philadelphia. And chances are Ben Simmons will probably want to be in L.A., yeah. not Philadelphia. I hope that's different. But to me, if there is any doubt whatsoever that he wants to be there because of his mental makeup and his approach, his passive-aggressive approach to the game, you cannot take him number one if you're Philadelphia. Mm. You got to go with Brandon Ingram. But that is the only reason that I say that because I'm a talent-wise, regardless of what I've seen from Ingram, I'm a Ben Simmons dude all the way. Okay. I got to tell you, in all my years of watching college basketball, Ben Simmons, most baffling prospect I ever attempted to evaluate. The more I watched, the less convinced I was. And I watched a lot last year of LSU. Stephen A, as yet, this kid has no jump shot. You said 33% from three. He only took three, made one. But he has no jump shot. And it's, it's mind-blowing to me that he could get to this level of competition, the Southeastern Conference, played at a high level, obviously, in Australia, w without even wanting to shoot jump shot? Really? You're 6'10", you weigh 240, you put up, like you rolled out of bed and put up 19 points a game, 12 rebounds a game, and five assists a game. Stephen A., he's got the gift. He can see it and distribute it. At 6'10", I mean, it's, it's magic LeBron-esque what he's got going there. He, he just, it, it's second nature to him to distribute the basketball beautifully to his teammates. Yet, you point out, it, it's, it's low to no motor. It, it's, it, it's a kid who looked like, I don't know, maybe he resented our system here in the United States that forces you to go to college for one year. And he just said, okay, I'll go mail it in because it looked like at LSU, he was going through the motions. He has no quote unquote killer instinct. He has not an ounce of Russell Westbrook in him. There's no rage to win whatsoever. I thought that team was a little better than you did, and yet it didn't even make it to, to the postseason, to the NCAA field. You're kidding me. With that player that you're saying now that Philly should take number one, you tell me, if he decides to go to Philly and just kind of blend into that mess, what are those Philly fans? They would be relentless on him. They would not stand for that. He's going to have to be a star and act like a star and play with some sort of takeover mentality if you're going to be that dude in Philadelphia. Last quick point. Do you realize Brandon, Brandon Ingram is more than a year younger than Ben Simmons, and he's much longer. They're both 6'10", but, but Brandon Ingram's 7'3 wingspan to, to 6'11 wingspan. So Ben Simmons' arms are a little short for his physique. 
So Brandon Ingram made 41% of his three-point shots and took 195, 80 of 195. He can shoot it. So I would be tempted to say the upside of this incredibly skinny kid from Duke, I don't know, long term, it might be right up there with Ben Simmons. It's close. Well, 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 when you look at Brandon Ingram, you think Kevin Durant. Yeah, you because do. Because of his lankiness and his, and, his, and his jump shooting. But yeah. the reason why I bring up the name Carmelo Anthony, Skip, is not because of that he resembles Melo. It's because of it, it resembles the situation in 2003. I consider Ben Simmons a LeBron type. I do, too. I consider Brandon Ingram a Melo type. Well, I mean, but Meaning Mello was an a, offensive. Uh, Mello had just, no, like no, no, a I'm, bull I'm, I'm physique not, to him. I'm yeah, not, yeah I'm, not, I'm not talking about their game. Yeah. I'm talking about the fact that Brandon's a scorer, yeah. and you're comparing that to what LeBron was. Mello was a scorer coming out of Syracuse. I got you. LeBron was, you know, the, the chosen one. Ben Simmons sort of had that, that aura about him, and, you know, he's magic-like, but... Brandon Ingram could put the ball in the hole. Yeah. So I'm just looking at it again. If you're at Philadelphia, you got to think about this, and you probably don't want to go with Ben Simmons because if his motor ain't what you want it to be, <laughs> Philadelphia is not going to tolerate that. Yep. It's the wrong place. Gotcha. It's the wrong place. Last time they had the number one pick, they took your boy <clears throat> AI. That was exactly 20 years ago. That worked. Yes, No one ever did. questioned his motor. No. Nobody didn't question his motor. No, exactly. And no one questioned Russell Westbrook's motor either. Westbrook and Durant played up and down games on Monday. How will they fare in game two tonight against the Warriors? We break that down next. Stay here. Back into your heart. Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook to put up much better overall numbers tonight. And I expect Golden State to win yet another very close game, another barn burner. I cannot wait. But I especially expect Kevin Durant to be much better than 3 for 12, as he was in the fourth quarter the other night, and Russell Westbrook to be much better than 1 for 4, as he was in the fourth quarter the other night. Conversely, above and beyond all that, I expect a whole lot more from the two-time MVP, Steph Curry, who was 1 for 6 in that fourth quarter. I expect Golden State not to go 1 for 10 from 3. And Stephen A., bottom line to the other night, this is my conclusion yesterday, the brunt of the blame has to fall on the slender shoulders of Steph Curry. I expect him to rise and shine tonight, and if they are going to win this game, as you call it, a must-win game at home, game two, Steph Curry is going to have to be the best player on the floor above both Durant and Westbrook. Well, I also need, Skip, I totally agree with you. I think that Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant will put up considerably better numbers. They'll be more efficient, more lethal, which obviously will call for a tight contest. But I think Golden State will answer the bell because of the level of urgency. And I think they will win a close, hardly, you know, hardly fought contest tonight in game two. But what I will say is that let's not just put it on Steph Curry. How about Andre Iguodala and Sean Livingston? These brothers can play. Um, you need contributions from them, particularly when you consider the fact that Deion Waiters and Enos Cantor come off the bench and make a contribution for OKC. Your depth has to answer the call. And dare I say Maurice Spates as well, because with Andrew Bogut hobbled, playing or not, him not being 100%, Spates needs to come in there and be able to do some things. Festus Azili needs to be able to, to do some things. You're going to need these guys to step up into the fray and handle their business. So, yes, Steph Curry has to recognize Russell Westbrook is no joke, and he's coming. He's not backing up. And I'm not saying that Steph Curry can't handle the challenge because he's Steph Curry. I'm saying you have to treat this superstar with, with, with the respect he deserves because in his own way, Russell Westbrook is close to being every bit as lethal as Steph Curry is. Treat him with the respect he deserves. Outside of that, your bench players have to step up for you and offset the physicality that OKC will inevitably throw in your direction. Festus Azili and Maurice Spates have to answer the call. Andre Iguodala has to shut down somebody, at least to some degree, and Sean Livingston, who can ball in his own right, has to take advantage of some of those mismatches. By the way, 
I thought Iguodala did a really good job on Kevin Durant defensively in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I'm until, not saying he didn't. I'm, yeah, he, he yeah. did until Kevin finally rose up over him and made the shot at the end of the game that was actually well, that final nail in the coffin kind of shot. You're not going to stop you're not going to stop Kevin no. Durant period. But what you can do is preoccupy him by making sure you show up and produce when you have the ball yeah. on offense. Andre Iguodala is a better offensive player than he showed in game one. Show is Sean agree. Livingston, and that is what I am talking about. I, I only wish you could be there tonight because I'm afraid it won't count unless mm. you're there. Well, you know, I mean, you, you are right about that. Yeah. I mean, the party lot, starts when I show up. Yeah, a lot of ladies But then again, stay then again, yeah. to, to, to yeah. indict, well, let's not go that far. <laughs> but let's, let, let, let's indict myself in this regard. I was in Cleveland last night. I'll be damned if that was a party because it was a thumper. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I mean, and, see, see, Anderson and those guys at the strike, man, I was struggling to stay awake. I ain't going to lie to you. Tonight you won't be struggling. Game two, tonight, mm -hmm. 9 Eastern. We can't wait. We'll react to all of it tomorrow. But when we come back, we need to react to this. It was the puncher around the world this weekend, and now Rubnet Odor has been suspended eight games for it. Did the all right, Trugnet Odor has been suspended eight games by Major League Baseball for punching Jose Bautista and fighting in Sunday's brawl between the Blue Jays and Rangers. Skip, did they get this suspension right? Stephen A., I thought they got it exactly right. Not too harsh, not too soft. I thought the message was, okay, we'll let you guys settle these things yourselves to a point. You can't actually throw punches that connect. When you do that, it's going to cost you a basically a week's worth of games. Skip, I completely disagree with you. I think the suspension should have been a minimum of 20 games. Wow. And I'm not talking about the here's why. Because I understand certain things come with baseball. You get hit by a pitch, you charge the mound, you tussle, stuff like that. I'm focused on the punch, and I'm focused on fairness. If this had been an NBA player that connected with a punch like that, Canelo Alvarez hitting Amir Khan, yeah. basically, except Batista didn't fall. What would we be talking about? What would we be mandating? But because it's a baseball player, he only gets to get eight games. I'm not satisfied. Wow. To be continued tomorrow. Mm. Yes. Stephen A., great to have you back. As always, thank you Good guys for back. hanging with us. We will see you tomorrow. Enjoy the game tonight.